Over the years of 3D printing, I've become more interested in capturing time-lapse videos of my 3D prints. My name is Zach and I'm the bite-sized engineer. In this video, I'm gonna show you several ways to capture time-lapse videos using these two printers. Whether you have a smartphone or a DSLR camera like this, the easiest way to create a time-lapse video is just to use the time-lapse function built into these cameras. If you go into your camera settings, you can turn on the time-lapse mode and it will take a picture at some set interval, whether that's 30 seconds or a minute, it will just take a picture and then at the very end you can stitch all those pictures together into a time-lapse. The problem with this approach is that the video is often motion blurred and you can't see your 3D print. This is especially true when you're using a bed slinger type printer like this one. It's kind of like taking family pictures with a toddler. This problem would be solved if your printer would just hold still while you take the picture. So as long as we could figure out how to get the print bed and the extruder to hold still while the photo is being taken, the problem would be solved. Fortunately, this is easier than it sounds. In most slicer software settings, you can go in and insert some G-code that will execute at every layer. So all we need to do is tell the printer to go to a specific spot after each layer and then pause for a certain amount of time and then resume. This custom G-code is like telling your printer to stop and pose for a picture at each layer. With that part out of the way, now we have to figure out how to trigger a DSLR camera like this one. Most DSLR cameras like this have a remote trigger port on the side. So I've got a cable here and I can plug that in. Now on this end, I have the tip, the ring, and the sleeve. If you connect the tip and the sleeve signals, that's the same thing as pressing the shutter button. My camera happens to be a Canon, and I know that other DSLR brands work, but the triggering method might be a little bit different. Let me show you exactly how this works. I have my camera turned on and it's in picture mode. I also have it set to manual exposure and the autofocus is off. I'll use my tweezers as a set of jumper wires and I'm gonna connect the sleeve with the tip and you'll hear that this triggers the shutter. Looks like I got a nice picture of my arm. You could leave your camera in auto mode and use autofocus, but in my experience, I've had much better luck setting the exposure as well as the focus manually because I don't want those things changing from picture to picture. So now the question becomes, how do we get the 3D printer to connect those two signals together? And the answer is a limit switch. To make this work, I'm gonna use a little TRS connector and then a little limit switch. And I'm going to connect the normally open and the common terminals from the switch to the tip and the sleeve connections on the TRS connector. When I solder these two components together, I'll be able to push the limit switch to trigger the shutter. I'll use a little poster putty to keep the components in place. Before I move this, I wanna plug this in and test it to see if it works with my camera. On this particular printer, I know that the x-axis homes on the left-hand side, so I'm gonna put the limit switch on the opposite side so that I don't interfere with that homing cycle. I need to mount this limit switch to the right-hand side of the gantry, so to help me do that, I designed and printed this little bracket. The limit switch slides right in there and sticks out the other end so that I can plug in the TRS cable here, and then the bracket mounts to the aluminum extrusion using a little T-nut. Now I can go into my slicer settings and I can adjust the pause position as well as the position of the limit switch to get it so that it just touches that limit switch and takes a picture. With everything set up on the printer and in the slicer, I can now take pictures using the limit switch and create a time-lapse video. You're gonna need to use video editing software to stitch together all of the still images into a video file. There are lots of free options as well as paid options to do this. So that covers the process for FDM printers, but what about resin printers like this? They only have the one axis that moves the plate up and down. Well, I did a little bit of research and it turns out that there's a really clever way to do this. With a resin printer like this, anytime there's a new layer, the UV light comes on and exposes it for a certain amount of time. If I can use the UV light turning on to trigger the shutter, this will work perfectly. I'll still use that same TRS connector on my camera to trigger the shutter, but it turns out I don't actually have to close the circuit between the tip and the sleeve. I can actually just reduce the resistance low enough that it triggers the shutter. So instead of using a limit switch, I'm actually going to use a light dependent resistor or photoresistor inside the enclosure of my printer. So what I need to do is find a photoresistor that's the right value that when the light comes on, it lowers the resistance enough to trigger that shutter. I've done some digging around and I found this little photoresistor that is about 10 kilo ohms when it's covered up and when I shine a bright light on it, it goes down to about 100 ohms. So I think this is going to work. 
So now I just need to do the same thing I did before, but instead of soldering on a limit switch, I'm soldering on this photoresistor. I've removed the back panel of my enclosure and I've drilled a little hole that will fit the TRS connector. So now I just need to thread on the nut and then put the enclosure back together. And this should go without saying, but obviously unplug your machine before you do something like this. So now I can plug the machine in, turn it on, and then I'm gonna plug my TRS cable that goes to my camera right into the TRS connector. So then I'll start a print and we'll see if this works. Okay, here goes the first layer and I did not get a shutter trigger. What's going on? I'm thinking maybe that the photoresistor isn't close enough to the UV light source. If I put some extension wires on there and get it closer to that UV light, I think that may solve the problem. So I've got longer wires on there and I think I'm gonna zip tie the photoresistors along the same wires that feed the UV LED. I'm trying to get that as far as I can in there next to that light source. And I'll just snip off the extra zip tie and then I can just put this back on. Okay, I'll plug the machine back in, turn it on, plug in my camera, and I'll start that same print job again. Okay, here we go. Aha, perfect, it works now. It's triggering the shutter. Sweet. So now that takes one picture for every layer. Now that I have the photoresistor close enough to the UV light source, I can use it to trigger the shutter on my camera. Like I said before, you're gonna to need to use video editing software to stitch all of these still images together into a video file. With a little bit of extra effort, you can improve the quality of your time-lapse videos using the tips and tricks that I showed you here in this video. I know I only covered how to trigger a DSLR camera like this, and many of you may only have access to a smartphone. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see me try to figure out how to trigger the shutter button on a smartphone. I have a couple of ideas. I could use a Bluetooth remote, or if I get really desperate, I could use a solenoid to tap the shutter button. Again, if you're interested in seeing this, let me know down in the comments. That's it for this video. My name is Zach, and I'm the Bite Size Engineer, and I look forward to seeing you next time.